Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I'm reading you a story about simple machines. And simple machines are something that at first were really hard for me to understand because they were simple things like a shovel or a slide or a wheel. And to me, I was like, that's not a machine. That's a, that's just a thing. But when I learned exactly how these machines help us do work, I was like, oh, these truly are the simplest forms of machines. So here we go, let's read all about it. Simple Machines, Wheels, Levers, and Pulleys. It's by David A. Adler, my favorite science guy, and illustrated by Anna Raff, my favorite science illustrator. <laughs> here we go, friends. Machines make work easier. Look in a mirror, smile. You are looking at a whole set of simple machines. A whole set of wedges. A wedge is, a thin, is thin at one end and wide at the other. It's a simple machine that helps break things apart. Your teeth are wedges. When you bite into an apple, the sharp thin end of your teeth split the apple. Your teeth change the up and down direction of your bite into a sideways force that splits the apple into pieces small enough to swallow. An ax is also a wedge. A lumberjack drives his ax into a log. He swings his ax down and the log splits apart. The force of the lumberjack swing drives the wedge into the log. The wedge cha changes the downward direction of the force into a sideways force that breaks the log into smaller pieces. A pair of scissors is a pair of wedges that work together. Thumbtacks, pins, nails, shovels, forks, knives, and chisels are all also wedges. Many boats are wedges too. The front is narrow so it can push easily through the water. Have you ever played on a slide? If you have, you've played on a simple machine. Stand at the top of the slide and look down. It's hard to, it's a hard drop straight down, but sliding down is not hard at all. It's fun. A slide is an inclined plane, sometimes called a ramp. It's a flat surface with one end higher than the other. An inclined plane makes it easier to climb up and down. It makes it easier to carry things up or down. Imagine having to lift a box loaded with bowling balls. Lifting the box would be difficult. Pushing it up a ramp would be easier. The more gradual the slope of the ramp, the easier the work. Of course, the more gradual the slope, the further you have to push the box. An inclined plane gets the same work done with less force over a greater distance. Roads often twist around mountains. The roads would be shorter if they went straight up, but a road that went straight up a mountain would be too steep to drive. Mountain roads are inclined planes. The more gradual the slope of a mountain road, the easier the drive. But the more gradual the slope of the mountain road, the greater the distance you have to drive to reach the top. Inclined planes are used to load trucks and to make it easier for people in wheelchairs to get around. A screw is an inclined plane around a straight metal nail. It would take a great force to push a nail into a piece of wood. Turning and pushing a screw into the wood is easier. When you push and turn a screw, you are moving it in along a circular inclined plane. Have you ever played on a seesaw? If you have, you played on a lever, a simple machine. A lever has two parts, a solid bar and a pivot. A pivot is sometimes called the fulcrum. On a seesaw, the long board with a seat at each end is a solid bar. The platform in the center doesn't move, it's the pivot. The person on the other end of the seesaw may weigh as much as you do or more, but with a seesaw you can lift your friend easily. That's because the seesaw is a lever. It's a simple machine that makes lifting easier. A shovel can be a lever. Find a shovel with a long handle. Take it to a sandbox or a beach. First, load the shovel with sand. Hold both hands at the far end of the handle and lift. It's difficult. The load feels really heavy. Now, leave one hand at the end of the handle and move one to the middle and lift. The load feels lighter. 
Your hand at the end of the handle is providing the lifting force. Your hand in the middle is the pivot. You're using the shovel as a lever and it's making it easier to lift the sand. Have you ever tried to move something heavy? It's difficult to push or pull a heavy box along the ground. It's the friction, the rubbing of the bottom of the box against the ground. That makes moving the box so difficult. It's a lot easier to move the box if it's in a wagon. It's the wheels and the axles on the wagon that make the work easier. A wheel and an axle is just a large wheel attached to a small wheel. The small wheel is the axle. A wheel and axle is a simple machine. Wheels reduce friction. Only the very bottoms of the wheels on a wagon touch the ground. That's a lot smaller area than the bottom of the entire box. With less rubbing on the ground, there's less friction. A wheel and axle also multiplies the distance something turns. Have you ever been to an amusement park? Have you ever been on a Ferris wheel? A Ferris wheel is a good example of how wheels and axles multiply the distance something turns. The axle in the middle of the Ferris wheel is attached to the motor. The motor supplies the power that turns the axle. The axle turns the Ferris wheel. The axle is just a small wheel. It doesn't make a big circle when it takes, makes one complete turn, but the attached Ferris wheel does make a big circle. In one complete turn of the Ferris wheel, each seat on the wheel goes a long way. On a Ferris wheel, the distance the axle turns is multiplied. A wheel and an axle can also be used not to multiply the distance of a wheel that the wheel turns, but to multiply the force used to turn the axle. You do that every day. Every time you turn on a fox faucet, you are turning a wheel and axle. The faucet knob is the wheel. It's attached to a shaft, a thin rod that turns the water on and off. That sh thin shaft is the axle. Turning the shaft would be very difficult. The knob is larger and easier to turn because the knob multiplies the turning force. The larger the knob, the easier it is to turn the thin shaft. Some wheels are attached to, to the axle, some are not. The front wheel of a tricycle is attached to the axle. The axle is attached to pedals. When riders turn the pedals of their tricycles, they are turning the axles that turn the front wheels. It's the front wheels that pull the tricycles forward. The back wheels of the tricycle are not attached to the axle, they just spin around. Many machines need gears to make them work. A gear is a wheel with teeth. Gears can change the speed, power, and direction of a machine's work. Combine a wheel and an axle with some rope and you have a pulley, another simple machine. A flagpole uses a pulley. The pulley is at the very top of the pole. You don't have to climb up the pole to raise the flag. You just pull down on the rope and the flag goes up. The pulley at the top of the pole changed the direction of your pulling force. For every foot of rope you pull down, the flag rises one foot. A flagpole uses a fixed pulley. It's fixed, attached to the top of the pole. Many curtains and window blinds also used fixed pulleys. What if you added a pulley, one that moved up and down with the flag? Now you are using two pulleys. You have to pull the rope further to get it around both pulleys. You have to pull it more than one foot to raise it that much, but the pulling is easier. The more pulleys you add, the less force you need. The next time you pass a construction site, look at cranes, the large machines used to lift heavy objects. You'll see a pulley, probably several, between the top of the crane and whatever it's lifting. With the pulleys, the motor in the crane needs less lifting power. Well, that is the end, friends. I hope you understood the simple machines a little bit more based on this reading. I think it's incredible. I think the pulleys in particular are extremely incredible that just by adding them, the force becomes less that is needed. All of these simple machines, though, are something that you can go out in your backyard or in your house and find and just kind of play around with and see you know, how do these simple machines make the work easier, at least from a force standpoint. Maybe you have to do more continued effort, but that's a whole nother story. Thank you so much for reading this with me, friends. I hope you learned a ton, or even if you learned just a little, that's, that's okay too. Have a great day. Bye.